Hey everybody, welcome to How To Tuesday. Been taking some questions from the audience and I got a good one about how to pick a saltwater landing net and why you would even need one. So we're going to go over that today and it's going to be a two-part series because we're going to go over this and then we're going to talk about how to use a saltwater landing net, how to properly net a fish. So let's go into how to pick a net and why you might even use a net. So the fish that I'm netting on a regular basis are permit primarily, bonefish, redfish, snook, um, and cobia offshore. Cobia are a, are a fish that um, a net is a very good tool to have because a lot of the cobias that you catch are right on the line. And you don't want to gaff them because they might be too short. That'd be a bad thing to do. And they are very difficult to lift into the boat. Um, if they're on the edge, sometimes they break the line. And they can be a violent fish. They get in, they start kicking everybody's butt uh, on the boat. So a landing net, I tried a landing net a long time ago. And uh, surprisingly, for Cobia, it worked really well. The fish just laid completely still and motionless, almost like paralyzed in the net. We could get it up and measure it. If it wasn't big enough, we could let it go. If it was big enough, we could go right in the cooler. Um, so Cobia is a, is a fish that is good for the landing net that a lot of people do not currently net, but you can. It's very good. So the, the landing net is, is a great tool for tournament fishermen that are um, really counting on this fish to score some points, right? It is also a great tool for conservation because it shortens the fight. Um, in some cases, like with a big permit, it can shorten the fight by 15 minutes. Sometimes you have a fish that comes right to the boat and it makes a couple of laps around the boat. It gives you a shot at netting the fish. If you are good with the net and prepared, you can net the fish and the fight can be over minutes faster than if you do not have a landing net and you're trying to just grab it by the tail. Um, so if you're going to practice catch and release, you want to do it to the best of your ability, a landing net can substantially cut the fight. And in my opinion, the handling of the fish in the net compared to the length of time that you're fighting it is better. So I prefer to just net a fish very, very quickly get a quick picture, let that fish go, rather than really long fight, grab it by the tail, and let that fish go. Um, it seems like the longer they fight, the, the worse their survival rate. So I want all these fish to um, survive. That's what we're doing. We want, we want that to happen. So we want as little handling as possible. A landing net also allows you to um, remove the hook right there boat side without ever picking the fish up without ever touching the fish um you can do that with some fish some fish make it very difficult there are definitely fish that i do not like to net i don't like to net barracudas i don't like to net sharks i don't like to net kingfish or something like that um if you think about all the fish that i just named what's the one common thing that they all have the sharp teeth right so they bite and sure enough they will go right through your net and uh, so those are, those are fish that I do not like to net, but have netted in, um, in the pursuit of a world record or a tournament record or something like that so that you can um, substantially cut the fight time and have a better chance of landing the fish. Uh, landing nets are allowed in IGFA rules, so you can do that as long as they meet the requirements. So you would definitely want to check and make sure that your net is of the requirements. Uh, for the IGFA. And um, so the things that I'm thinking about when I'm picking a landing net, and there's a lot of different kinds of nets out there. There's a lot of different uh, companies that make nets. Um, one of the things that I'm thinking about is the size of the net. And the size of the net basically is dependent on what kind of boat you have for the most part. If you have a big boat, you might have a, a place to carry a big net. If you have a small boat, a big net becomes a real problem because it is completely in the way. So my favorite net by far 
is one that is made by Frable, and it's called the Power Stow Net. The Power Stow Net folds in half, right? So there are some nets that fold, but the outer rim is like made out of a bungee cord. Those are for small fish. Those are for bass, bluegill, light fish. The Power Stow Net is able to hold fish of over 100 pounds if you get a, a net that is the, the size capable of holding 100 pounds. Most of them will hold a fish over 50 pounds very easily. And, you know, you need to be careful when you're lifting the fish up because if you're doing it at the very end of the handle, you can still bend the handle. But if you choke up, you know, after you net the fish, you choke up almost to the net, you can lift that fish right in the boat very easily. The net material is very strong. The the net uh, hoop is very strong and the handle is very strong. So <clears throat> one thing that I'm looking for is how big of a net can I fit in my boat? And as you add a net that folds, you can fit a much, much, much bigger net in a very small boat. In my skiff, the Power Stone net goes right in the bow hatch and it not only folds, but the handle um, extends like telescopes out and it also folds up into the net. So you push the handle forward and then fold it and a net that has a, a handle that may be 48 inches long or 60 inches long is now just barely longer than the hoop of the net. So that is very slick, very, very slick. I like that, and I have one of those in every one of my boats. Um, <clears throat> that's my favorite landing net by far. The other net that I like is one called the Trophy Hall, and the Trophy Hall is, is great because it is heavy duty. It will pick up a lot of fish. And if you are catching a lot of fish, maybe you're in Louisiana, maybe you are catching tons of redfish, and you don't want to fold the net up every time, and you are just bailing these fish. I mean, and they're they're too big to lift into the boat bass style like Kevin Van Dam or, or a tournament bass fisherman where you just lift them into the boat. They're too big for that. They're 20 pounders. Maybe you don't want to fold the net every time that you put it up because you're getting it out so often. I mean, there are places where you catch a lot of fish. It may be worth having a net that's always ready to go. Maybe you keep it in a rod holder. Maybe you keep it, you know, somewhere in your boat that's out of the way in a bay boat or something like that. That can be another great one because the handle's not going to bend. The netting material is very strong and uh, the net's going to last you a long time, even under that kind of use. So those are the two nets that I, I like the best in particular. We can see those nets um, by going to the Frable website. Uh, let's see here. If I click here, I've got the Power Stow net on the Frable website, Fraybill, F-R-A-B-I-L-L.com, Fraybill.com. You look up Power Stow net and you can see these uh, nets. They have... Um, they're typically black and gold in color. They have several different sizes available. So the stowed size, 14 by 40, 16 by 44, 16 by 44, 18 by 50, and 20 by 55. A 20 by 55 is too big for anything that I do. I look at that kind of 18 by 44. That's, that's pretty good for hermit, bonefish, redfish, snook. And uh, cobia. If you are in need of something bigger, they have it for sure. The uh, handle will also um, telescope. So you can pick from two different handles. One is the 42 to 60, and another is 48 to 66. You know, whichever one you, you think. If, you're, if, if, uh, if you can get it in a boat, I'd go with a longer handle. But sometimes when you uh, move up to that handle, you don't have room to fit it in your skiff. So you want to make sure that that works for you. The other thing that I'm looking for in the choice of a net, whether it's a Frable net or you choose to go with another manufacturer, whatever you want to do, this is something that's pretty, pretty important, and that is the net material. What is the net made out of? In my opinion, the best net is one of the rubber ones. The rubber nets are the easiest on the fish. One of the things that you're looking for um, to avoid in a net is a material that is thin 
and has knots in it because for the fish that we're fishing for, the redfish, the permit, bonefish in particular, in particular, we're planning on releasing these fish. That net material can split the fins on the on the fish. The knots in there are rough, and you can see that the net has has scraped the fish uh, when you're using a net material like that. So Fraybill has a uh, another um, net material, knotless net. The net material that is in the Power Stow nets is a knotless mesh, much, much easier on the fish. So whether it's a Frable net that you're choosing or something else, either go with the rubber uh, if, the, if that's available or go with knotless for sure as far as uh, a catch and release net. That is super important, I think. So those are some things to think about. Um, as you start to determine whether or not you're going to fish tournaments or whether you can cut the fight time down, is a net important for you in your fishing? And in my opinion, it is. It's one of the most important things uh, in my boat. I feel like I, I think we're doing the fish a service by netting them quickly and re releasing them much faster than, than netting them uh, or, or, or just fighting them to exhaustion to where you can grab them by the by the tail. If you grab a 30 pound permit by the tail, you got to be really strong. Um, and if that fish is really green, it can pull out of your hand. You can fight the fish for another five minutes. You can try again, pull out of your hand again. Now you fight the fish for another five minutes. If you'd had a net, that fish would have been back in the water, released, swimming all on its own after you'd taken a couple of pictures of them. Um, so that's something definitely to consider. And as you're getting better, with the landing net and how to use it, which is what we're going to talk about in the next episode of this two-part series, you can also get really good at holding the net in a certain way so that the net material is barely supporting the fish in the water and they tend to relax. And when they relax in the netting material, it allows you to reach down there with a pair of pliers and pull the hook out without ever even touching the fish with your hands. Uh, so if you've gotten enough pictures for the day, then I strongly encourage you to release the fish as quickly as you possibly can. To me, that is the most important. How fast can we get this fish in and release it? Because every minute, every second that you have that fish on and you're fighting it, that makes it more difficult to revive that fish. It's tired. It's like you just ran you know, a race or just did a workout and, uh, and now you're, somebody just sends you off on your own. So those are, those are the nets that I suggest, the Power Stow for sure, and also this Trophy Hall net. The Trophy Hall net is kind of cool because it has a certain handle that can allow you to use it one-handed on some of the models, and, uh, and it also uh, has a, another handle down right by the hoop of the net so that when you do get a big fish in, you can lift by that handle, which avoids bending the, the handle at all. Um, so check those out, but the fray bill power stow, that's the one that I, that I like the very best. And, um, in the next series, we're going to go over, uh, a few tips on how to use a landing net. It seems pretty easy, but there's some, certainly some things that I see a lot of people get wrong and, um, miss fish all the time. So, uh, and even, even the net can even cause you to lose the fish if you're not really good at netting them. So being a fishing guide, it's super important to get good at it. So stick around for next week's episode as we go over uh, proper landing net techniques. All right, that's it for today. See you.